Every time you get together with us right here at Pace Assembly, it's a blessing to us. And we trust that you will stay connected with us on social media. You can download the app or you can go to paceassembly.org and connect on all the social media sites and like those pages, get notifications, information of upcoming events. We want to stay connected with you. So till the next time that we're able to be around the Word of God just like this, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon. Today, this message will be politically incorrect. I really could care less whether or not it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, or whatever that it is. I promise you, by the time it's over with, I'll probably have offended every one of them. I'm not here to be uh, someone who is going to give you pablum or to be able to be politically correct with my message. I promise you, by the time you get through with this message today, you'll realize that in this world, this book has now become totally politically incorrect. And by and large, every one of us in here, if it is by the definition of the modern progressive mindsets, is that uh, you're a bigot and intolerant. Well, if it means standing with Jesus, then call me whatever you want to. But I can tell you, whenever Jesus comes again, I'm going to be standing in faith, ready to meet the Lord in the air. How many of you are ready right now? Praise God. So since my last Prophecy Files update, uh, I promise you, thank you, William, thank you so much. I promise you that um, there have been amazing and shocking events that have taken place that has literally set me back. I told my wife in the preparation of this, and typically, um, typically this message usually contains at least 40 hours of study and preparation to be ready for you. I don't say that to boast. I'm telling you that I have done my homework and everything that I will say, you can find it uh, yourself, either from the Word of God or in the headlines of today. Billy Graham made the statement many years ago that I don't read uh, the newspaper to find out what's going on in the Bible. I read the Bible to find out what's going on in the newspaper. And you're going to find that out today, but since June even, I told my wife I have been shocked at the speed at which uh, things have been transpiring. And today I will only show you and deal with just a very small amount, very minuscule amount of events and signs that Jesus said would take place in the last days. And because of that, it's important that you stay up to date on what's happening. That's the reason why I bring these messages to you. That's the reason why we have this teaching that goes out on Sunday afternoon at one o'clock. After the first of the year, um, the Lord directing, I will focus more upon the hot topics that are certainly going to be those in this next year, 2020, leading up to the election. Today, I'm gonna bring you perspective. I'm gonna bring you the word of God. The focus of some of those hot topics I'll take up next year because America is certainly in a fight for its existence. There are people and agendas that have uh, their thoughts in mind for America that are far and away from the Judeo-Christian belief and values that that this country started with. Thank God that there are still a group of people, they might call them gun-loving, religious, right-wing, whatever. But I will tell you, I don't, I don't have to have labels like that. I'll just tell you I'm a believer in what the Bible has to say in its literal form. And so with that in mind, I'm going to ask you to open up your minds and your hearts today as I bring this to you because once I begin to roll with this, it will, it will move with lightning speed. And I'm asking God to give me strength and help to be able to do this. There's never a time that I bring this series of messages, just a little bit more on this monitor, if you please, that um, there's not a tax from every angle, and yet God, I know in the time that we're living, this is the message that the church needs to hear. So Father, I'm asking you right now to seize this place under the mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit that's already resident. 
We recognize right now, God, that by your spirit are things accomplished. And I need your help today and your, your strength, your touch inside of my life. I need you to be able, Lord, to speak the words that need to be spoken and let the ears of every hearer in this place, God, not hear what is not being said, but hear what the spirit would say today to the church. I speak to this church today. And I pray, God, that you would anoint us and prepare us and help us to reach out for the lost like we never have before. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said a good amen. amen. I'm sorry, I'm not getting anything out of these monitors, if you please. In the book of Matthew 24, as a point scripture, if you want to look at it there, the Bible says, and Jesus went out, verse 1, and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, incidentally, that first song you sung uh, while we were in Israel earlier part of this year, we played that as we were crossing over the Galilee. It was an incredible moment of the anointing of God. Jesus sits on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Verse 4, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed, take heed, pay attention, listen up, that no man deceive you. All right, if you'll put that up there, please. Unfortunately today, the pulpits of America are silent concerning Bible prophecy. Many of them, uh, preachers and ministers, are not speaking to their congregations concerning what's happening in these last days. Jesus, in the book of Matthew and previous passages of Scripture, specifically in Matthew 16, reprimanded the Pharisees and the Sadducees for, and this religious group, I want you to remember that, in this religious group discerning the times that we were in. He said, when the evening you say, when it's evening you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Jesus called them hypocrites. He said, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. I believe that there are probably four, four different kinds of uh, excuses used today by pastors for not sharing the issues of Bible prophecy from the pulpit. Let me give you a few of them right quick. They don't understand prophecy. They fear offending the members of the church. They sense that it will scare somebody. And I'm always amazed by people that want to talk about scaring somebody when they've just gone through a haunted house, worn a costume that's supposed to be scaring other people, and watch horror flicks all the time, and watch shows like Evil and Scandal and all these others that are out there on the front. See, I'm already offending some of you. Just know that you're all on the same plane. My plan is to offend every last one of you today. They sense that it will scare people or that people might stop paying their tithes if they think it's too close to the end. If you stop paying your tithes just because you heard that Jesus is coming at any moment, you're going to miss the rapture. <laughs> or number five, that for the fear of the pastor or whoever's bringing that presentation looking crazy or some kind of fool or lunatic. Well, let me make you very assured and clear, I don't really care what you think about me today. I'm going to bring the Word of God. And the Bible prophecy that's found from Genesis to the book of Revelation is so clear and so accurate that today I'm speaking to you from the foundation of 100% accuracy on everything that has been prophesied concerning the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. There are over 500 prophecies revealing the first coming of Jesus and identifying him as the one and only man who is the Messiah prophesied that would be born, prophesied by Micah in the town of Bethlehem, that would be born uh, of a virgin prophesied by Isaiah, that he would be born as one coming from uh, the tribe of Judah, that he would be born as one that would be coming from the root of Jesse, that he would be born in a small town of Bethlehem, Euphrates, that he would be born in the 
the tower of the flock, that is in a stable on the north side of Bethlehem, the very place where they would slaughter young lambs for the sacrifice in the temple. 500 plus prophecies revealing the first coming of Jesus Christ. In your New Testament, Every one out of every 25 verses deals with the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want to say to you that if he got the first predictions right from the Word of God, you can rest assured that all of the second are going to come to pass, just like Jesus said. I like to say that God is the master chess player who's moving all of the nations into alignment right now so that they can be able to be the pawns in the hands of God Almighty. The ultimate hope, ladies and gentlemen, found in Titus 2 and 13, the blessed hope. We are looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're born again, the next great event on the calendar of God is none other than the return of Jesus Christ in the clouds to rapture the church off of this planet. It's going to happen. I don't care what anybody has to say. They're going to call it the ET phone home syndrome. They're going to be glad you're gone. Rest assured, by the end of this message, you're going to understand that. The concepts and the mindsets of those that are saying today that all of that is nil, and even religious people and pulpit preachers who will say and look you in the face, don't worry about it. It's all about the here and now. I come to tell you on the authority of God's Word. No man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. But rest assured, as sure as Second Peter tells us that we should be ready because since our fathers fell asleep, some people say that all things continue just like they are. But he said, you rest assured, there's coming a great shout of the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Rest assured, he doesn't care if you're 99 or 9 years old or nine months old or nine seconds old, if you're ready to meet Jesus Christ, it's going to come with a shout, and you better get ready today. It can happen before I finish this message. We know what the Bible has to say concerning, many people do, concerning the end. But what are the signs that are pointing us toward the end of the age? That's good, fellas. And toward the end of the age and the process that's happening that the world is going to go through during this time. Well, we already know the scripture says, Jesus said it out of his mouth. He said that as it would be in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. Please understand that the days of Noah and the days of Sodom and Gomorrah are not just emphasized by the evil imagination or the sin that was going on. It has more of an emphasis with the fact that people that should have been ready were casually going through life, buying and selling, uh, marrying and giving in marriage. They were going through the casual uh, routines of life and only to be found out that suddenly something took place. Jesus said it's going to be just like that in the last days. But I want to zero in on one particular word that's found in the scripture I'll show you in a moment. It deals with uh, a delusional time that we're in. Jesus said in the last days, writing about the last days in the book of Matthew chapter 24, 1 Thessalonians, uh, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, you're going to see this. Jesus spoke of delusional times. Paul spoke of delusional times. I can assure you that that's what we're involved in right now. So let's take a look at the times that we're in right now that are signs, signs of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. One deals with the fact that the U.S. is enabling Turkey, who was a player in the last days written about in the Word of God concerning the adversarial uh, behavior that they feel like is taking place. Turkey is is flexing its muscles, as you've seen, going into the top of Iraq and Syria and slaughtering Kurds and others that are in that area, many Christians that are running for their lives. You need to understand that Erdogan is now an individual who sees himself as the leader of the coming caliphate. I will assure you that what they call the caliphate will return, according to the book of Revelation, according to the book of Daniel, as the old revived Roman Empire, which incorporates all of North Africa, all the way up into the Middle East, and all the way up to Italy, Rome, and into the European area. 
these are the things that are happening in the time we're living in where these, these individuals who see themselves as totalitarian leadership are fighting for that first position. What you need to know is that God already predicted, and it's written in the Word of God, that Turkey, otherwise known as, uh, uh, as Togomar, would be found there in the book of, of uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, that is one of the players in the last days. They are mere pawns in the hands of an almighty God. So is Persia, as it is written in Ezekiel 38. The Persian, gov- or the Persian empire is otherwise known as Iran. Iran ha- is the global terrorist, terrorist provokers, the leadership are. I'll tell you in the rank and file, the fastest growing church in the, United, in, the, in the entire world right now, the fastest growing Christian church is found in the country of Iran. The greatest persecution of women, the greatest persecution of all kinds of people and leadership that is out of their mind with terrorist thoughts is all in Iran right now. Just this past week, they shot down, they claimed another drone. They shot down a drone just several weeks ago that was the size of a 747, as I understand it. Supporting, they are supporting Hamas, which is a terrorist group, a terrorist group in in Gaza right now, a Hezbollah in the northern end. I've seen and stood on the border just a few months ago where Hezbollah is just across the border in the northern border there in Lebanon and in Syria. You need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, while Israel, I've got a picture, I wish I'd have brought it, uh, a picture of us standing in the the groves of uh, apple orchards and and, uh, 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 mangoes and other fruit that is there, the border fence that separates Lebanon and Israel. Israel is making fruit that they're shipping out around the world. On the other side, I took a picture of the opioid fields that they sell drugs throughout to support Hamas and Hezbollah. This ISIS cells that are now wanting to rejuvenate themselves are popping up in this past week. In the past two weeks, they've called for terrorists in the United States, of which there are cell groups here in the United States, that's a known fact, that are wanting, they are calling for them to set forest fires as wildfires across the United States as terrorist acts. It is into the vacuum when President Trump pulled our troops from that location. It is into that vacuum that there came one who is declared from the book of Ezekiel would be the leader, the the Gog and Magog war, that leader being Gog. Who is that? Well, your newspaper article now describes him as the king of Syria. Now, if you know anything about Bible prophecy, you know that the king of Syria is a title, ladies and gentlemen, or the Assyrian is a title for the type of the Antichrist that is to come. Now, Mr. Putin has filled the vacuum there when the United States removed, and ladies and gentlemen, he is the ex officio of that entire area. He is the one who is the leader of Iran. They don't move until he says. The leader of Syria, the President Assad, doesn't move unless he owes his very existence to Russia because they came in. Turkey is on the take there as well with him. It is Russia that has now come in to be a strategic arbiter, according to the article in Syria. And the balance of power goes to Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, you are literally watching the gathering of the nations as described in Ezekiel 38 and 39 around the small country of Israel. And what are they doing? They're looking to take a spoil. The Bible says in Ezekiel 38 verse number 9, it will be from the northern parts that they will come to take a spoil. And what does God allow? He allows for them to think an evil thought. That somehow now that the tiny country of Israel is vulnerable enough that we can step in. You're watching the gathering of these nations right now. The rhetoric that is taking place both there in, in, those, in that particular region as well as in Iran. You're looking at pictures now that have been painted by Iran in recent weeks as they celebrated the downfall of America once again with their rhetoric, painting on the walls of the former United States Embassy in Iran, the broken arm of the Statue of Liberty and ruins all around, and the bloody uh, and, and skulls that are painted there along with the flag of the United States portraying rifles and skulls. That's what they see America as the great Satan and Israel as the little Satan. 
There is, without a doubt, according to the article, a coming Middle East configuration that's going to take place. Without a doubt, Russia will be involved and Israel will fight for its life. And I can assure you that Israel is not going to back up in the time that we're in. They currently do not have a a solidified government under Mr. Netanyahu. Mr. Bevan and Mr. Netanyahu are fighting for the seats of the government to actually form a government. So right now, listen carefully, right now there is no legal government with authority in the nation of Israel. They have a different form, and I don't have time to go into it today, but they'll ha- try to make up from the different, they don't have a two-party system. There is uh, many different factions that are found there in the Knesset, and the one who gets the most has the authority to do so. This is very important, because while this is being suspended right now with the government, even though Mr. Netanyahu has been elected, the authority and the power is still in suspension. So what are the signs in the nation of Israel? Well, first of all, let me say to each and every one of you, in case you've never been in one of these services before or never read the Bible, how do I know it's the last days? It's the last days because in May of 1948, the clock of God began to tick when Israel in a day, according to the prophecy of the Old Testament scripture, Zechariah, that they would be a nation formed in one day. Ladies and gentlemen, they're flourishing like never before, and yet they're watching their enemies gathering all around them. And with that comes anti-Zionism, those that hate the Jews for being Jews. The extremist factions are rising on a daily basis. And what is happening with the vacuum that, that President Trump pulled our troops from that particular area and saying we, he, he stood on a platform of pulling our troops out, uh, of uh, being able to bring our troops back home. What's taking place? Well, it's literally causing no small stir there as Mr. Netanyahu made the statement in this particular article, quoting from the word of God that when Israel stands regardless, it will stand if it has to by itself, but it will no longer be uh, traveled in cattle cars into concentration camps, they will fight to the very bitter end. And they're going to have to do that. For the Bible predicts that there will be no nation that will stand with them in this last day. Why is that? Why do you see even the backing off and their concern about how America is backing away from, uh, from their support. Pastor, we shouldn't be backing away. Well, I want you to know that the prediction in the word of God must come to pass. And that is that every nation will back away from Israel. And that great war of Gog and Magog is going to be one where God himself, God himself will come down and defend the nation of Israel to the degree that he will create such a slaughter that one third of the armies that will come against them will be slaughtered and for seven years they'll burn the weapons and for seven years they will bury the dead and they'll all have to say this must have been the hand of the almighty God I want to declare to every one of you that are watching and those of you that might watch this uh, some other time on YouTube, you need to know that Israel is, without a doubt, the chosen people of God, the apple of his eye, and when you poke your finger in the eye of God, you will get a reaction from God. According to the scripture, there would be an uptick even of the hatred of God's chosen people as there has been since day one. And now Nazis in the United States have dressed up in Colorado as Jewish people to spread out anti-Holocaust or denying Holocaust propaganda to people. That happened just a few days ago. Daniel chapter 6 verse 25 said that these same people that will be deniers and the same people that came against Daniel, the very families and the leaders that came against Daniel when he said, I'm going to pray anyway, they and their families were tossed into the lion's den when it was all said and done. Rest assured when it's all said and done, ladies and gentlemen, those that hate the Jewish people and hate Israel are hating God and God will have the last say. You don't think that's upticking? Look at what's taking place with a Holocaust survivor from Auschwitz herself who has a lifetime appointment on Italy's, in Italy's government. 
But because she raised as a matter of law change in Italy's government, uh, that they, we should protect not only the Jews, but we should uh, protect and make sure that we don't have this kind of hatred going on for any religious group or any people. The right, the right uh, wing of, of, of Italy's government uh, rose up against her to the degree that she made that she's 89 years old. Come on, somebody. 89 years old, survivor uh, who is a senator for life. In response to the revelation of more than 200 me social media attacks against her, she continues to stand up for what is right and for Jewish heritage and now has to have 24 hour a day security with her because her life is threatened. If that's not enough in the country of Germany, Nazism is rising now like it never before and even here in the United States of America. And while we're seeing, and many people don't realize the fact that our president has been dealing very strictly and harshly with the government of China, because for years these bad deals have been going down and we don't even know it. I watched a documentary a few weeks ago where the geography of our fruit, and I thought it was quite interesting little video, I started watching it only to find out that 90% of the fruit that we eat in America comes from China. Go into your house, I'm not against the Chinese and I'm not against them making something, but America has long, has long since sent out all of our manufacturing jobs somewhere else and they've taken advantage of it. And what's happening? China is cracking down on Christians like never before because the communist Marxist mindset is still in control there. And just this past few days, they took a bulldozer to a 3,000 seat auditorium, detained the pastors, beat them for uh, propagating what they called hate speech, and they were preaching the gospel out of the word of God. I know your silence in the room says it can't happen here. Hold your seat, strap in, put your tray table in the upright position. There is turbulence that is up ahead. If it happens in China, it will happen here. Well, pastor, what's going on in our world? I'll tell you, there is a rewriting even in China to take away Jesus and any figures whatsoever and replace it with the president of China's own statement in the word of God so that they are continuing to propagate the little red book of communism. What's happening around the world? Civil unrest. You're watching it on your news. In Ecuador, in Hong Kong. You're watching it in Chile. You're watching it in Peru and all around the globe as people are rising up today and saying that they don't want to have a part of living underneath the totalitarian or communist or Marxist kind of mindset. Why is that so important? Because the Bible said that it was going to take place with this kind of violence in the last day. Incidentally, in the Hebrew, the word Hamas, which is the title of the terrorist group that occupies Gaza, that on a daily basis are lobbing bombs into Israel. How would you like to have some terrorist group in Milton that was lobbing bombs into Pace every day and, and, and they have no guidance on the missile, they just land wherever they land, on a school, in a house, in a playground, wherever it may be. That's what's happening right here. The word Hamas is the word violence. So the word of God says in the book of Genesis that in the last days, one of the signs would be massive violence, massive Hamas in the last days. Civil unrest is taking place. Now, what I'm about to tell you is totally politically incorrect. incorrect. And some of you are going to want to write me letters. Save it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the UN is taking more and more of a role in this one, one world government that is being formed that will be taken over by the Antichrist. What you're looking at is what's called the sustainable development goals of the UN that have only recently in 2015 have been redone and projected to come to pass. They want these goals, these 17 goals to come to pass before the year 2030. They are working feverishly to be able to do that, along with their other surrogates and financers like an individual named George Soros. 
who was quoted just a few days ago, who has toppled governments and done everything he could to interfere with elections and everything else. It's a known fact, check it out for yourself. He made this statement, quote, Trump has almost destroyed the new world order. Well, let it be so. Why is that? Mr. Soros is a Hungarian Jew. He wants to bring about a one world government himself, everybody under one banner. If that isn't enough, the UN is doing everything they can to facilitate it, and you're hearing it in the news. I want to stop right here before I go to this next slide and tell you this. You're seeing 17 goals. Look at this. The number one goal is no poverty, uh, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation. On and on it goes. None of those anybody would probably say in and of themselves that they're a bad thing. In fact, most people will embrace it. You're afraid to say anything right now, aren't you? But let me tell you this, consider this. From the book of Revelation 13, as I looked at this chart and went into it and started looking at what it is that they have intended for, not only for the world, but that includes the United States of America. You better hear what I'm saying. The UN is all about the climate change and all about all these kind of structures to come in to bring it under one umbrella by 2030. Please note that these things went into place on 2015. But what do I see here? What, do you, what should you see as a Bible-believing Christian? What I see is not one part of life for any person on this planet is their own. Controlled exclusively by those that want to be able to dictate to you how much water you can use, how much power you can use, how much that you're going to be able to earn, on and on and on. Well, that sounds very interesting. If you flip in your Bible to Revelation 13, you'll find out that when the Antichrist takes over, that people will not be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark or the number of his name or the symbol even of his name. What's that all about? You're looking at the very system of the Antichrist. Christ that will come into play once this entire world is brought up underneath his government. I know that's way over there and all that, and the UN is in New York City, but for me personally as a Christian, this is my total opinion. I know the UN is in America, but the UN needs to get out of America, and America needs to get out of the UN. Save it. Congressman Cortez has purported, hold your comments, I might be called more of an activist. She has purported the Green New Deal and has just this past week declared that it's not about the climate, it's actually about your money, the economy. Raising taxes, raising all kinds of money from this category and that category. Her Green New Deal would effectively mean and line up with the climate control and the UN in reshaping America to such a degree that every building in New York City would have to be torn down and rebuilt underneath the Green New Deal. Now, I know that sounds silly to you, but she believes it. And I know that sounds silly to you, but there are members, and here we go. There are members of the, of the campaign for president that are democratic socialists that believe in this particular thing. What's that all about? It is all about steps toward the one world government under the Antichrist. Let's go a little step further because their number one propagator is the Pope. If I haven't offended you by now, here we go. What is the, I would think that the Pope, the head, the vicar of the Catholic Church would be preaching the gospel. But instead, one of his number one statements and messages deals with climate change. It deals with the drastic measures that scientists need to take and people need to take right now. Do you know where the, the number one uh, pushback is going to come, as I've read from you from Matthew 16? It's going to come from religious groups that are against people just like you who believe that the Word of God is literal and are believing that Jesus Christ is the only true and living God. 
Under this new, listen to me, I'm going to make this declaration to you. The Antichrist system is playing into the hands, it will be playing into the hands of a one world government, one religion, and climate change agenda has become the religion of the future, and it will be led by an apostate pope. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Before I got here just this past week, the Pope has made this declaration, I'm not making this up, through one of his very close confidants and writers of, his, of, of statements that he's made, that the Pope has now denied the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ according to this particular writer, Scalfari. What does that mean? In the last days, that means that people will deny the faith. Please remember that. Deny the faith. They will apostatize. Several years ago, uh, many years ago, in the Catholic Church writing, it is said that the 112th Pope, according to the prophecies of St. Malachi, is supposed to be an apostate Pope, leading to the Antichrist coming on the scene. Pope Francis is the 112th Pope. What's happening in our world? Morality is going fast down the tubes. Thank God for Dr. James Dobson and his faithfulness over the years to protect your children. Come on, somebody. You better pray for him. He's under attack like never before. And he could not even describe, ladies and gentlemen, he could not even describe the atrocities that are now being brought into the public school system for sex education. I'm talking about as early as five years old of teaching of things that he said he could not even speak of and it angers him, it angers him. So let me say to you, the children that you have, they're your children, they're not the states. Thank God for our godly men and women who are teachers in the public school system. We have many in this church, but they're not in control of the agenda that's being handed down and pushed upon them by an antichrist system who wants to pervert your children. It's amazing to me that we would watch those being arrested as sexual predators on the streets by the, by the tens and hundreds, ladies and gentlemen, and yet we're bringing it into the school system, filling the minds of children that are not prepared to deal with any of that, and parents are clocking out saying, I'm going to give them to the state. You better wake up, ask your children what they're learning, and ladies and gentlemen, if it deals with something that's against your values, walk right on down there in a nice way and talk to the principal and voice your concerns and love everybody, but don't be silent in these days. Those children belong to you. Oh, yeah. Pastor, it can't be bad. How bad can it get? It's going to get worse. Because right now, there is a woman who wants to be able to reverse the gender of her seven-year-old in Texas. And now there are three states that are trying to block what is called the puberty blocking drugs for children. This is a reality, my friends. Trying to block out whether if a little boy says in school today, I told you this was going to happen many years ago. They're trying to block out, give them a pill to block their gender if they feel like they're a, a, a member of the opposite sex. If a boy feels like he's a girl, we'll give him a drug and it will effectively sterilize that child. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the agenda that you'll see as what is identified in the latest writing as population control. What's happening in our world? Spirituality that has gone all over the page because now the world's largest Ouija board opened up in Salem, Massachusetts. It's not enough that we've got demonic activity coming through the television and the internet. Now we want to build the, world's, the world in America the world's largest Ouija board, in the location where the trials of witches went on. Y'all can't help me. In the location where the revival of North America began to take place in the first great awakening. On the very steps where, where uh, Jonathan Edwards held up his sermon to his eyes because he was so blind he couldn't see it, he had to read it word for word. He stood there on the steps just north in, in Connecticut and preached that message and people fell on their faces and grabbed the pillars 
of the church afraid that judgment was coming upon them. Now, nothing is found there except a placard. I stood there, a little placard that identifies where he stood. And the number one location where the agenda of the LGBT has formed is right there in the very location where the first great awakening took place. Religion, they say, according to the polls, and I will tell you, don't listen carefully to the polls. You know, they go up and down as much as the weather in Florida. It's cold one day, freezing the next, hot the next. Hang out for 24, you'll get all the different flavors of the climate around here. Climate change, are you kidding me? Gonna be 28, they said on Tuesday. It's 70 degrees today. It's good to live in Florida, isn't it? They're saying that religion is, is falling off and it's, it's very true according to the statistics that some 17%, uh, I'm sorry, 26% of America now says they have no religious affiliation. We're not here, you better hear this, in the days ahead you're going to hear about Vision 2020 from this church. We are not here to pat each other on the back, hear some songs and a sermon and go back out and not affect and influence this world. God has called this church and every gospel preaching church to be salt and light. You better get ready to win the loss like you never have because the days are collapsing and Jesus is calling us to do the will of his Father. Come on, say amen. We're living in a country now where the spirituality has turned, the pendulum has swung so hard that now you can't pray in school, but we'll make a place for you to do your Muslim prayers. Now, not just just invited, but mandatory. And if that's not enough, and we wonder why we can't get preachers trained up in the hour that we're in, in the Union Seminary in New York, watch this, the seminary students are bowing down, confessing their sins to plants. Pastor, that's so silly. That seems so foolish. It is foolish, except for Romans chapter 1, where the Bible says that there will come a time in the last days when they will worship the creation more than the creator. You can look for Christian persecution to increase in the days that are ahead. By the help and grace of God and even the United States government, a man that was persecuted for a long period of time, Pastor Brunson, has come out to tell the story that over 245 million Christians have been persecuted. And he is a firsthand individual of that persecution in Turkey. In the last days, the Bible said persecution would take place. And here's the question I have for you. Who will be able to stand when the persecution comes more rampantly in the United States of America? What about society, Pastor? Well, society's gone crazy too. Delusional. 70%, according to this particular poll, now believe that we are imminent for a civil war in the United States of America. Not about, not so much about race as it was in the civil, prior to the civil war, but now about class and about uh, the the different classes and about ideologies. And you better listen. I want you to, I'm going to stop right now. I'm fixing to preach. Just punch your neighbor and tell him you need to hear this right here. You better listen carefully to me. You didn't punch your neighbor. I'm going to come out there and punch somebody. Come on. (laughs) Listen very carefully what I'm about to tell you. In the days that are ahead, if you're not careful to follow after the Word of God, you're going to get caught up in the political maneuverings and the ideologies of Republican, Democrat, and whatever it may be. You better hear this today. You're a Christian first. Before you want to affiliate, that's up to you, whoever you want to affiliate with, I certainly wouldn't be counted in the number of those who are, uh, who are abdicating abortion and euthanasia and all kind of mess and uh, things that are going on. But I will tell you this, you better make sure you're a Christian first because when we reach across the aisle, you better be able to take your black brother and your white brother and your Asian brother and come together and say, we're not one part of any party. We are a part and part of the body of Jesus Christ. And that has got to be the superior over everything. Say amen, somebody. The political discourse, and I'm telling you, it's coming from every side. I said it's coming from every side. I know you got your favorite people all the time. You better put all that down, and your favorite person better be Jesus. The polls conducted right now by the German, Georgetown University said 
that the 2020 election could be the most divisive and explosive since the 1860 election that uh, precipitated the Civil War of 1861 and 65. Why is that happening? And where's the attack going to come? Well, you watched it by a now political candidate running for president who has now gotten out of the race, but he pushed the button and said, there will be taxation in my administration, he says. Please understand, he is not the only one. This is not a passive statement right here. He's not the only one that believes that churches should be taxes, tax. Listen very carefully to me. If every church in America was taxed right now, you would watch the implosion of Christianity and churches that would go under right now because they could not afford the taxes on their property. And I want you to know, and don't take it from me, go look it up for yourself. The founding fathers set that in motion as churches being tax exempt because they knew that the voice of morality in a society would come from a Bible-believing church that did not have to be constrained by the government. And don't listen to the progressives who don't even see any progress. <laughs> Why? Because the mindset of them is this. We're going to tax everything out there and we'll get more revenue, including churches. But I want you to understand something. The morality and the society that which we live in, the, how the church goes is how the United States and other worlds go. And what you're watching as a falling away now is only symptom, symptoms that are found in our society through our government. And you need to understand that the Bible predicted all of this. It's not silent in any of this. Neither is David Wilkerson, as I read it again last night. From his book, The Vision, in 1973, he said, I see a day when taxation of churches would take place and it would collapse churches all around our country. That from 1973. Listen carefully to me, church. If you thought this was controversial, I'm about to hit a real stride. In 2015, I stood behind this pulpit with a Prophecy Files update to tell you that the day that they overturned the marriage covenant found from God in His Word in the Supreme Court, there would be an unleashing from the abyss of lying spirits, legions of lying spirits that would come were loosed upon this nation. Isaiah 59 declares that there will come a time, and we're seeing it right now, where truth will be fallen in the streets. You couldn't believe a thing anybody was saying. A handshake and a smile didn't mean anything anymore. You got to have all kinds of documents, and then you got to back up and say, wait a minute, did they tell me the truth? I'm about to call it out. There are some media organizations that now have become the promoters of pollution and anti-American rhetoric and agenda and not journalism. How do you know that to be true? You saw it on your news. ABC put this up and declared that this was an attack that was taking place by the Turkish government upon the Kurds, only to find out later that this was coming from uh, a, a firepower demonstration in a military base in Kentucky. It gets worse. Days ago, you found out that for three years, three years, they've been suppressing the truth of Mr. Epstein and his connections all around. This reporter said that we had it all three years ago. I want you to understand something. As an authority and a leader and the pastor of this church, I am bound by the law that if a act of sexual molestation or abuse takes place upon someone and I come into the knowledge of it, I am bound by the law to pick up the phone as I have had to do before in my life as pastor and report that activity. Ladies and gentlemen, the news media is complicit with a sexual predator who was having sex with seven-year-old little girls. This is not something unknown. This is what's happening in America. 
And while we are watching this take place every day, I hear the voices of people here and those that are watching saying, hey, it doesn't touch my world. I'm not, I'm not going to get involved in it. You better get involved in it, ladies and gentlemen. You better pray like you never have. Because if you're not careful, you'll get caught up in the mess. And the next thing you know, your mind will become numb to what is sin blatant in our face. Look for this to take place in the days that are ahead, what they call deep fake. How many of you ever heard of deep fake? Most of you have not. That's the reason why I'm bringing it to you today, deep fake. Deep fake videos. In other words, they're looking for this between now and the election next year where people will make videos and put it on the internet to make you believe that something has happened when it really has not. Deception to try to get you to vote for or change your opinion or whatever by putting all kinds of different fake ads and all kinds of stuff up. Be on the alert, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, take heed, wake up. Do not let yourself be deceived in these last days. I don't care if it comes from a pulpit or comes from a politician. You get your face in the word of God and pray like you never have. And the Holy Ghost truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. Here we go. So according to the leader of The View, she said the best thing that the political candidates can do, specifically her picks, is to just simply lie to the American public and then do what they want to do after they get elected. Lying spirits. Not only that, but while Jeff Sessions, a former uh, United States Attorney General, was standing in Northwestern U to give a speech, he was overrun by people that were against it. This is happening on college campuses all around. We are not tolerant. It's amazing to me that those that are calling for tolerance are not even tolerant enough to hear another opinion. We can't sit down with something, with somebody and listen to them as they tell their point of view on it without hating on somebody or getting on social media and taking them out in character. Ladies and gentlemen, not only is that not American, it's not even Christian. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that some got together and said, well, we like Apollos and we like Paul and we like this one. He said, wait a minute, away with all of that. You point your direction towards Jesus Christ. And what is it that makes the church come together anyway? Is it because we all have the same opinions? We all have the same hair? We all like the same thing? We all eat chocolate cookies? No, it is the one common component of Jesus Christ that brings us together as one body. Jesus don't have a harem. He's got one brain. And now you haven't heard about it. And now another individual has come out to say, I lied about Judge Kavanaugh. And thank God for Senator Grassley, who has brought the information to the FBI and other authorities and demands that there is an indictment against someone who tried to absolutely, and it's a known fact, you read it for yourself, none of this right here I'm making up, she lied before Congress to try to get this man out of the office. Thank God for a righteous conservative judge and his family that stood the test in the face of every attack and sits on the bench today with the right. Listen, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You better thank God there are righteous judges that are in the United States of America. I'm not saying we're going to like everything that's going on. But is there someone who still believes that this country was founded upon the word of God? For all of you Fox News lovers, Fox News is moving more and more left, left, left. Judge Jenny on Fox News now has to submit her transcripts well in advance of any show because of the things that she has said from a conservative standpoint. Why is that? Because the sons of the former owner are now selling it to a left organization in Britain and you're gonna see more and more of it turning that direction. What's going on in society? My friends, I- I've never seen it on this, on this way. These are things that have transpired. The suicide rate among men has gone up exponentially in recent years. Listen, between 2007 and 2017, the suicide rate between men of 15 to 24 rose 50%. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death for white males between five 
and 34. In 2017, over 47,000 people took their lives. Listen carefully to me. You know what that speaks of? There's any number of things, and mentals, and mental illness and all kinds of things that are going, but listen to me. It speaks overwhelmingly of this. I've lost hope. And where is the pulpits? And where are the believers? We are narcissistic in our mindset and we spend every day with our face inside of a telephone trying to find out what somebody said about us that won't matter on an amount of hill of beans into the future. I know you're getting real uncomfortable now, but just sit tight. It's going to get worse. Because I'm telling you today, we must be a people that are more concerned about the souls of men, women, boys, and girls than we are about what somebody liked on our Facebook. Are we risking a new civil war? Well, it's very interesting that you, that, that statement is now being said. And my resident historian, I must give him kudos, Jeremy Tompkins. We've been talking about it over the past several months about the correlation, the parallels of, of the time we're living in now and the time preceding the civil war and the election of Abraham Lincoln. And look carefully at some things that he sent to me that I believe are quite eye-opening. Number one, the nativism, uh, the, 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 the uh, immigration of the Irish into the United States of America was taking place and they, the Italians were against, I don't have time to go into all of the details of all this, but listen carefully to me. They were absolutely against any immigration into New York City by the Irish whatsoever. And so they fought hard against one another. But in 2020, we obviously see this happening with the anti-immigration uh, things that are going on with the Hispanic population. The opium, war, listen, opium wars between Britain and China preceding the civil war. And what do we have right now? the greatest epidemic of opium that we've ever seen before in our lifetime. Political unrest over slavery during the time preceding the Civil War and now unrest from the deep state. If you don't know what that's all about, those like uh, Soros and others that are pulling strings underneath to try to manipulate and, and handle this deal. What's that spirit all about? It's all about the Antichrist. It's written right there in the Word of God. What else parallels it? Radical, violent abolitionists. They are willing to use violence to end slavery during the, during the Civil War. But look at this. Radical leftists now that want to destroy the republic through violence like Antifa. Listen, this particular group, when we were in Washington in July, this particular group had just been there in the streets of Washington, D.C., breaking out windows, tipping over cars, and setting stuff on fire that the taxi driver that was driving us said, I pulled into the middle of it. In fact, the business, we were, we were riding a taxi driver. This was not your normal Uber. This guy was um, riding a bicycle. We were sitting in the little, little seat in the back, and he said, I rode my bicycle right in the middle of that violence one day. And I feared for my life. These are the parallels. Congressional political party chaos that's going on in the Civil War. You can read about it. This man Brooks, sitting in the halls of Congress, took his cane and beat the other guy down. And now we've got political chaos with all that's happening with the impeachment. Let me tell you something, all the enemy's doing and all of our, listen, Putin said, we are watching America. He said this the other day, we are watching America and how they're handling all that's going on. The Supreme Court decisions of, of Dred Scott, he took his case straight to the Supreme Court to, to be able to uh, uh, defend himself for the freedoms for him and his family, and he was denied that in the United States of America. And now, look at Mr. Kavanaugh having to face that same kind of pressure going on. The Marxist socialist unions that are taking place in the Civil War, but what have we got right here? We've got democratic socialists. I'm not talking about standing up behind a pulpit and saying, uh uh, no, right out there in front of everybody. Now, if you want to know what that is, get on a plane and go to Venezuela. If you want to know what that is, get on a plane and go to Russia. And you'll find out, ladies and gentlemen, that the freedom that I'm standing up in this pulpit right now, and I don't know how long it's going to last that I can stand behind this pulpit and preach the way I do. They're going to come and say, you got to shut it down. We're not going to, we're not going to put you on YouTube. We're not, we're not going to allow you to stream on the public airways anymore. I want you to know I will refuse to be silent, and I'm just wondering how many of you are going to tuck tail and run. Are you going to stand up in the evil day and be strong in the Lord? 
Lord and in the power of his might. Help us, God, help us. We need a revival and we need it right now. Check this out, I've got to hurry. The first oil wells were drilled pre-Civil War and now, now look at it. What's going on? We're all over a Green New Deal because we're going to get rid of fossil fuels. We're going to, everybody's going to stand outside and wave their fans to get electricity. <laughs> Just this past week, we celebrated Abraham Lincoln coming into the presidency and the day after that, Civil War was called upon America. That's the reason why the church needs to be a picture and an image of the body of Christ where every tribe, every tongue, and every color can come together and worship God in peace and in love for one another. If you got a prejudiced spirit up in this house, you either repent at this altar or you can find the door today because I got news for you. That is not Christ. It's not godly, and it will not be tolerated in this hour. We are going to love everybody, everyone, all the time. Everybody can come to church. You better say amen or somebody might look at you. You're seeing the same kind of pressures that are leading up to the presidential election of next year. I've got to hurry to tell you that William Barr, William Barr stood before Notre Dame as a devout Catholic a few days ago. And he made these statements. I have to get it to you. Listen, if you want to go online and read his entire statement, it was one of the most prolific and religious, Christian religious supporting messages. And after he got through with his speech, the religious crowd raised up and said, that's toxic Christianity talk. And they wanted expunged from the record. I'm not talking about somebody who's not really, I'm talking about those that, that are in the religious community calling for it to be thrown down. He said in the past when society has been threatened by moral chaos and overall social cost of licentiousness and irresponsible personal conduct becomes so high that society ultimately recoils and alleviates the path that it's on. But today in the face of all increasing pathologies, instead of addressing the underlying cause, we have the state in the role of alleviator of bad consciousness. We call on the state to mitigate the social costs of personal misconduct and irresponsibility. Listen to this. So the reaction of the growing uh, illegitimate is not sexual responsibility, but abortion. The reaction of the drug addict is safe injection sites now that we want to call for instead of saying you can be delivered from that. The solution to the breakdown of the family is for the state to set itself up as a substitute husband and the same for single mothers and a substitute father for their children. God bless William Barr. So I want to say this to you as, I, as I'm racing ahead. Something is about to happen. How many of you can sense what I'm talking about? Let me tell you. The Bible said, Jesus said this, he said, if you don't praise me, the rocks are going to cry out in your place. I want you to know that something's about to happen, and even the rocks know that. Just this past week, they revealed the fact that they found what they believed to be one of the very stones in the high priest uh, breastplate that's been in South Africa. Pastor, I don't believe that. Well, engraved in that is the name of the tribe of Benjamin. When the Christian archaeologist was called to be able to examine the stone and its authenticity and they tested it and all that's going on, when he picked the stone up, suddenly it began to glow. He actually jumped up and dropped it. Hallelujah. Now, what you may not know if you don't study the Word of God, I've talked to you about the breastplate and the 12 stones that represent all 12 tribes of, the, uh, of, of, uh, of Israel. But inside of that breastplate were two other particular stones that whenever they needed to make a decision about something, they were called the Urim and the Thunim. They would make uh, those decisions by pulling out those stones and deciding what they were going to do by the authority of God Almighty. Even the stones know it. Hey, even more than that, ladies and gentlemen, the Jewish people know it. This is a picture of the Western Wall just hours before Yom Kippur. This is a record attendance in this year's acknowledgement of the Yom Kippur, otherwise known as the Day of Atonement. There were over 100,000 Jewish people standing at the Western Wall, praying and repenting 
and praying for Messiah to come. I've walked right through there and we walk without any kind of interruption. But they're crying out right now, Lord, God, forgive us of our sins and send Messiah. Even the Jewish people know that something's about to happen. But I'll go one further from the book of Exodus chapter 11. Even the dogs know that something is about to happen. This is uh, Conan the canine, also known as the very dog that chased El Baghdadi to the back of the cave. And ladies and gentlemen, it was a dog that ran him all the way to the back of the cave. Somebody say, I don't like that. Let me tell you what the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 11. Uh, go back right there. What are my clickers going crazy? Come on. Here we go. He says this. He says, but not a dog. This is God speaking. He said, they're, they're on the night of the Exodus, don't you worry, Israelites, and, and don't you worry, I got you covered. God said, when you get ready on Passover to leave Egypt bondage after 400 years, God said, but not a dog shall snarl at any of the Israelites at man or beast in order that you may know that Hashim, that's God, makes a distinct between Egypt and Israel. He said, your dogs that are barking at you, you better get saved. Because he said he won't bark at an Israelite, it'll bark at an Egyptian so that the world can know that I am the one who has got my hand upon on the nation of Israel. That's out of the book of Exodus. I can see that dog running to the back of that cave and an old Egyptian crying out for his very life and a dog barked. But let me tell you what the rabbis say about dogs barking. The rabbis say that when a dog barks, evil is present. But when a dog is jumping for joy, Messiah is about to come. I'll just let you know this name, Conan, in the Hebraic numeric numerology, everything has a number. In the Hebraic numerology, his number is 32. And that may not mean anything to you until you understand that the name Elijah, the one that Israel is looking for, his number is also 32. That may not mean too much to you until Elijah shows up. Even the dogs know. Come on, somebody. I said even the dogs know what's going on. I want you to know that the spirit-filled gospel preaching church is the only thing standing between us and all out evil taking over the United States and this world. And I'll declare to you today that the cup of God's wrath is filled to the brim. Iniquity, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, is being filled to the top, it's already at work, and the spear of the Antichrist is already at work. So what are the conditions, Pastor? What are the conditions that are leading up to the judgment of God? Well, the Bible says that every imagination, every imagination in Noah's day was only evil continually. We're living in a time of deceit, of lies and deception. And I believe personally that it all started when they made passed a law against the highest covenant of all, the marriage covenant. And when I started researching, I found out that in the ninth of Tamez, which is the month of Israel, they celebrate that time in the ninth of Tamez, which is in our month of June. They not celebrate, but they honor that day and pray that day, and they thank God. But they're also in a place of repentance because that's when Babylon came down, came in and destroyed all and took them captive and they broke down the walls and burned the walls down around Babylon. What's the big deal about that? It was on the 9th of Tammuz in 2015, June 26 to be specific, when the walls around the family was breached and the day the Supreme Court, the day the Supreme Court removed the hedge around Marriage and the marriage covenant is the same day on the calendar that they say that Babylon came in and took Israel captive because the walls were broken down. Matthew 24, Jesus said, take heed. I'm telling you the signs are to alert us to the very end. Take heed, listen to me, he says. That word take heed there means it is describing a society or a group of nations that need not only to pay attention, but to, that they are a society that have one time walking a well-worn path. But now they're departing from that well-worn path in their morals and in the way they conduct themselves. They're living on the edge. 
2 Thessalonians 2 and 11 says, For this cause God shall give them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Delusion. This is the same word in Matthew 24 that Jesus speaks about deception. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. He says, beware of a seducing spirit. It's the spirit of delusion spoken about right there. So at the end of the age, the spirit, the age is marked by delusion. Where people begin to believe things that are not supported by facts. Are we living there? They're not listening to truth no matter what it looks like. They face uh, the, the, the information coming their way. And if it sounds good to them, they operate by their feelings. And they've turned this nation and the world into a delusional place. Deluding the minds of people who now don't know who they are or what they are. Am I a male or a female? The spirit of delusion with lying spirits and deceptive spirits are on the minds of people continually. Iniquity is abounding today. So what is it? Because the God who never gives up on anybody at the end of the age... You better listen carefully right here. I'm about to go there. In the end of the age, the God who never gives up on anybody comes to a place where God himself says he's going to give up. From Romans chapter 1, it's defined here as the the times that God gave men up. What's the time setting that up? Are you still with me here this morning? Verse number 21, the Bible says, because they knew God, they knew God. Wasn't that they weren't saved? Wasn't that they didn't know God in that society? They knew God. That describes there was a day that we lived in America where you could leave your doors unlocked. Where the word was your bond. Where people were not terrorized and they loved one another and they worked together. And even sinner people would respect God, his house, and his word. Today, it makes no difference if it's Wednesday night or not. It's ball game on time. There is no respect for God. Thank you very much for all those amen. I'll say amen to myself. The Bible said they became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. What does that mean? That means that their human heart had become so full of iniquity and evil. What does that heart do? The heart sits there right now as you're sitting here and watching. It's pumping and whatever's in the blood is pumping through your entire system. If there's righteousness in your blood through Jesus Christ, it's pumping it through your system. But if there is iniquity in your heart, then you become darkened. And the more it pumps, the more it fills a society. The heart of America is pumping iniquity like never before. He said, when you turn from God, the only thing left is nonsense and a foolish heart that is darkened. He said they will profess themselves to be wise and boastful and proud, intellectual elitism, but they will be leaders that will become foolish in their hearts. Now, some of you may not like this, but here we go. They become fools. That word fool there is morano. You're right. It is the word we get moron from. It means that there will be a time when people will be absolutely morons in their thinking because they will not receive the word of God. And verse 23, preach, pastor, they would change. They would change the glory of the incorruptible into something that's corruptible by four-footed beasts and birds and creeping things. What does that mean? It means that they would lay on one side of the table what they believe is the word and what societies tell them and how they feel and they would change their thinking from this and pick this up and live by this standard. Preach on pastor. It it is the it is the history of idolatry as you're reading in chapter number one verse 23 where they would swap it for something else. They start out worshiping creeping things. That's what the Egyptians did. Worshiping snakes and all kinds of stuff. I saw it last night where they brought in the the goddess of uh, of, uh, uh, the gods of Baal that came into the Catholic church and set them right up in the Vatican side by side as a horrible idolatry that was going on and then somebody had enough righteousness in them that they went in and collected them right off of the altar went right down to the river and videotaped themselves pushing all these idols off. Ladies and gentlemen if we want revival the church has got to push their idols off and get ready to see God like we never have before. Preach pastor. So when's the first time God gave them up? The Bible said because they started worshiping man more Then God, God gave them up to uncleanness 
What does that mean? Through lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's an accurate description of the homosexual lifestyle. God never gives up on anybody, but the Bible says here, and listen carefully, in light of the fact that you're trading God for what you want, if you want it, this is what God's saying, if you want it that bad, not that God gives up on you. The real literal translation means this, God releases you to do what you want to do. He said, if you want it that way, I release you. Oh my God, that ought to make you tremble in your shoes today. So I said, Pastor, well, that, I know that's for that crowd over there. No, sir, this is for the crowd that's sitting on this pew this morning and those that are watching. It's for this preacher right here to say, God, shake us and wake us up and help us to realize how close we are to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before God gives you up, repent or we will all likewise perish. Turn back to God. Turn back to God. America needs a great awakening. The Bible said God released them to uncleanness, to dishonor their bodies amongst each other. The Bible says in verse 25 that they changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creation. This is everything about earth worship, environmental worship, and climate change. I think we should take care of the climate. The Bible tells us to do that. I think we should pick up our trash and not just throw it down in the church and let somebody else pick it up on Monday morning. I don't think we should stick our bubble gum up underneath the seats that we help to pay for. I don't think we should just be throwing our junk all over the place. We should be taking care of it. But we've come to a day, ladies and gentlemen, where the animals are eating better than the homeless that are on the streets under a bridge. When we start taking care of Fido more than we do our own family, we're in trouble. The Bible says in verse 26 that God gave them up. He gave them up a second time. He said, if you want it this way, I'm going to give you up to your vile affections, misplaced affections. You used to love me with all of your heart, but now you're loving something else. Come on, somebody. For even their women changed the natural use of that which is against nature. It's against nature. So go out in the field and find a couple of goats some cows, some lambs. I don't care how much you mess around in a test tube. It still takes one man and one woman because that's the way God created it. Oh my. Verse 28, and they even did not like to retain God in their knowledge. It's not that they didn't know God. They didn't want him anywhere in their stuff. Don't tell me, preacher, I'm sinning. This is the way it is today. Get ready, my friends. I've already had it hit me. Don't judge me. You're judging. You're a bigot. I'm not the judge. You're not going to stand before me, and you won't see me climbing up on that throne. But I can tell you right now, as a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, with or without papers from the assemblies of God, this Bible is right, and we're all wrong. And if you think, ladies and gentlemen, that you're going to survive the judgment of God to come, God said, I'm going to give you up to your own affections. So God gave them up. He released them. He released them to a reprobate mind, the Bible says. A reprobate mind. What does that mean? A mind, not that God gave them. The Bible doesn't say he gave them a reprobate mind. He turned them loose to their own mind. So what does that mean? That means that they get to a place, a reprobate mind that was one time trustworthy, one time serving the Lord, and now their minds are so tainted that they can't discern between right and wrong. Fulfilling the prediction from Isaiah 5 and 20 that they started calling good evil and evil good. Come on, somebody. My question is, if you stand by godly principles and life and living, what does that mean? You better get ready for persecution. Because an unrestrained society results in multiple things. That you can go on and read it this afternoon from Romans chapter 1, verse 29 through 32, that it begins to be filled with unrighteousness and fornication and wickedness and covetousness, and they won't endure sound doctrine. They'll sit in movies for three hours, but can't endure a 30 minute sermon. Where's your priorities? 
I bet you you have a diagnosis of cancer, you'll be all up on the front row lifting your hand. I bet you if one of your babies gets messed up on drugs, you'll be praying in the altar day and night. I bet you you'll fast and pray because, ladies and gentlemen, it starts touching you. You better do it before it ever touches you. What's going to happen in the church? First Timothy chapter 4, 1 says some will depart from the faith. What does that word depart mean? i got to tell you this quickly. It means that I'm putting space. This is where we're at right now. And some of you sitting in this pew here today, putting space between God and me. One time I was all up in it. Got to say, whoo, praise God, I'm all there. But now, things. Time, pastor. I just don't have time. And, you know, could we have a Saturday night instead of a Sunday morning service? Or how about Tuesday night? Can we do it on Tuesday? I'm open Tuesday night. And I told you two weeks ago, even in this building right here, that the cold are going to get colder and the hot are going to get hotter. My question is, you get to determine whether or not you want to be hot or cold. God said, well, I, I'm just, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not all the way there, but I'm not all the way out. Well, God calls that lukewarm. And it's the only time in the Bible when God vomits. And I can tell you that he's looking at an American church that has been given so much, supplied so much, had so many of the touch of God. And ladies and gentlemen, God is saying, I'm requiring of you right now more than what you're giving, more than what you're doing. I'm not talking about your money. You can't buy your way into glory, but you better be sure to give yourself holy. Come on now. You better give yourself holy because it's not you that's going to matter. It's going to be those babies that are coming behind you. Are y'all with me? What's the reason? Let me tell you something. I'm I'm hurrying here. I got to close. When lawlessness, I've been hearing this term, lawlessness. That's the description in 2 Thessalonians. Lawlessness, when it takes over in a society. Hear what I'm telling you. The Antichrist, I believe, is alive right now. I believe he's right off the way. I don't believe he even knows really who he is. But he's waiting in the wings. God has already picked a man. Where the iniquity of his heart is going to be so filled that he will be the collaboration of Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, and every other evil that you've ever seen in your life. The devil personified. But wait a minute. The Bible says the spirit of Antichrist is already at work in the world. Y'all hear me? So long before the man Antichrist shows up, the spirit of Antichrist is already there. We are living in the age and the spirit where Antichrist's spirit is invading today. People are offended left and right. You can't say nothing. Look at your neighbor's face right now. Just look at them. If they ain't smiling, they might be offended. Come on. I'm offended at 12.07. Mm. What happens if the rapture takes place at 12.08? I just want to let you know. Better hang out. Distance between me and God. How close are you to God? Because here's what's happening in a society where lawlessness rules. The Antichrist is not going to step on the scene and say, I'm coming to put my foot down. I'm going to take over. No, no, no. A lawless society, a spirit of Antichrist will proceed. And by the time the Antichrist gets here, A lawless people will raise up a lawless leader and applaud him coming into power. Where seven out of ten millennials today say that democratic socialism is our embrace. What's it going to be by the time your children and grandchildren get old enough to know? Get old enough to vote? Are you hearing me? I'm just going to touch this for you because this prophetic word right here It's so critical. Now be careful how you read this because some of you men right now are all getting excited right now. Bible says in Isaiah 4.1, this is a prediction for the days that, that we're in and ahead. And in that day, the last days, seven women will take hold of one man. Stop. It's so funny right now. Men are stone faced all around this building. Mm -mm, Not me, baby. You're the one for me. You're the only one. Follow me. Seven women will take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread. We'll wear our own apparel.
Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. The church in America is in such a condition that we're fulfilling this prophecy. I don't have time to preach this message. I'll have to come back to it. He's not talking about seven women. In the Bible, the woman is referred to as the bride. And if you go to Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you'll find out that those seven women represent the seven churches of Asia. And the Bible says that they will take hold of one man. The Bible says it's Jesus who's walking through the seven golden candlesticks of the book of Revelation through his churches. And even the churches that had commendation still had a mixture on the inside of them. And he warns them, stay close to me. Don't let your lamp go out. Seven women will take hold of one man and say, we'll eat what we want to eat. Don't feed us from the bread of life. We'll pick out the sermons that itch our ears and make us feel good. Don't give me no holiness preaching. Don't talk to me about the blood and the cross. Don't sing about the blood and the cross or you won't come back to sing here again. Well, I feel my anointing coming on right now. They said, we'll eat our own bread. We'll make our own sermons up. And we're at a place right now where such pablum is going on that we're seeing leaders fall. Christian leaders, preachers in the pulpit falling out all over the place. And we have such a shallow biblical literacy that false doctrine is being propagated today and people are swallowing it up just like the Bible predicted would take place. Come on, Holy Ghost Church at Pace. He said, we'll eat our own bread and by the way, we'll wear our own apparel. Ah, that's what Adam and Eve tried. They said, we'll put together our own clothes to cover our own self. But the book predicted that your righteousness is as filthy rags. When you wear your own stuff, you're still just as naked as you've always been. You put on your own, unri- your own righteousness and you're just as unworthy as you've always been. The only way you're going to be able to be clothed is in the white robe righteousness of Jesus Christ. You better put ye on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. Now, this is the real kicker because he says, they say, we'll eat our own bread, we'll wear our own apparel, and we want you to do this so our guilt trip is over with because we don't like these preachers putting that judgmental guilt trip on us when they preach the word of God and it hits me. I want to go out feeling good. Popsicles for everybody. What does he say? Only let us be called by thy name. All we want is your name Jesus on us. We want Jesus t-shirts so we can tell everybody we are Christians. But we don't want to wear your apparel. We don't want your burden. We want to come to church. We want to be called by your name. But we, don't, we want you to take away our guilt and our shame so, we're, so we are feeling better about ourselves. Come on, church. I'm waking you up to some false doctrine that you're hearing and listening to today. Just put your name on us, Jesus, and take away my guilt and my shame. But I don't want anything else you got to offer. I don't have time to go through this entire short chapter, but it tells us very clearly that the time, ladies and gentlemen, will happen when this will occur. And we are watching this take place, but in the middle of that, Isaiah describes two churches. He said one of them is going to say, we just want your name, Jesus, and we don't want anything else. Thinking like this is some kind of a la carte gospel. He said there's a second one. That second one is going to see my glory. You read on down there. I don't have time to preach it. That second one is going to be a remnant church. That second one means this. He says, he says, when he says, he says, this is going to be a church full of my glory. Do you know what this word glory means right here? It means to lay hold on by hand. God said in the last days, there's going to be a church that's going to be a reprobate church. And then I'm going to have a remnant church over here that's going to lay hold of my glory. And they're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And ladies and gentlemen, I not just predict it, but I prophesy it happening right here in this house. Oh God, show us your glory. I don't have time to finish this message, except I'm going to end it right here. We need a great awakening. Prior to the Civil War, prior to the Civil War, the second great awakening took place. 
They had massive revivals in Kentucky where thousands and tens of thousands were getting healed and saved and delivered. A circuit-riding preacher by the name of Peter Cartwright rode around and preached the gospel from his horse. Most of you may not know, if you go out in that Heritage Hall, the very first man that is, is an oil painting out there, Brother McGraw, literally walked from Alabama down to pastor this church in its early days to tell people about Jesus Christ in this community, and that's the reason why Pace Assembly is sitting here today. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said he walked. He didn't have a horse. He didn't have a cart. He walked down here with a Bible in a hand and some cheese in a bag and walked down here and said, thus saith the Lord. God give us preachers of the gospel today who are not looking for the paycheck, but they're looking for the souls of men, women, boys, and girls. And then rose up, what a dichotomy. Then rose up a man by the name of Charles Finney who stood in Rochester, New York. Imagine that, Rochester, New York and preached for six months the gospel of Jesus Christ and tens of thousands of people got saved. Preached for hours. It turned this entire country around in the second great awakening. Sunday school, in the second great awakening, that's where it started. Evangelistical outreaches and missionaries distributing Bible, it happened in the second great awakening. Are we gonna have another great awakening? Oh, pastor, I sure hope so. Well, it'll only happen if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Come on, musicians. I'm about to end. Hold up just a second. Oh, y'all, yeah, y'all going over there, whatever. I'll preach for another hour. But I'm gonna end right here because this one took me to the moon whenever I pulled this article up and started reading on it. Now, I'm gonna get myself in a position to shout. Because I was reading this past week. This is what they said, the climate control folks got together and said, 11,000 scientists got together and said, the only way to fight climate change is to reduce, gradually reduce the population of the earth. They said, we got too many people eating the food, too many people driving the cars, too many people driving SUV, too many people driving buses out there, burning up everything, putting emissions in the air. Got too many preachers with bad breath speaking out in the wind as breaking down the ozone layer. I read that and it didn't take me long for me to find out exactly what they're saying. They don't know they're saying it, but because I know the Bible, I said, because I know the Bible, are you sleeping on me? Because I know the Bible, and because these 11,000 scientists think that they got the grand solution, I came to tell you before they ever thought of it, God already had a plan. It's called the rapture of the church. And it ain't gonna be gradual. It's gonna be all of a sudden. And the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. Get on your feet if you're going up in the rapture. It's God's solution to climate control. Somebody shout if you're going up. Somebody give him praise if you're going up, if you're going up, if you're going up. Thank you for watching Pace Assembly. If you'd like any other ways to watch our services, you can download the app, go to our website, or follow us on social media. Here at Pace Assembly, we have several services to choose from. Sundays at 9 a.m., we have Sunday School, and at 10 a.m. begins our main worship service. On Wednesdays, starting at 7 o'clock, we have services for all ages, so be sure to bring out your entire family. If you'd like to see more messages like these, feel free to tune in live Sundays at 10 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. by downloading our app or going to our website.